What is up guys? I hope you guys have been good. I hope you guys have been shooting a welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Thanks to Azim Visuals for recommending this video on how to edit like Gunnar Stahl. Gunnar also had an interview with Complex where he talks about how he got into film photography. So if you guys have not seen that video yet, I'll have a link down below for you guys to check out. Now let's get into the tutorial. Gunnar Stahl has a knack for capturing iconic moments and portraits of many hip hop artists. Gunnar also shoots with a film camera which helps create the vintage aesthetics to his photos. If you notice, he does send a shoot with the on camera flash on. This helps light the subject and also creates dimension by separating the subject from the background. This also helps build and create a candid Polaroid type vibe to his photos. I like the detail and overview shots and I love how he made it into a collage. This is the edit we'll be learning how to duplicate today. Since I don't own a film camera, I'll be using a digital point and shoot camera with a built in flash which mimics the film camera setup but you can also shoot this with any camera and any on camera flash. So I had my friend Andrew help me out with today's tutorial and we went out at night to shoot a few quick portraits. The first thing you guys want to do is get a close up detail photo and once you guys have this, the next photo you guys want to take is the overview photo to show a little bit more of the environment and surroundings. Once you guys have both of these photos, we can now take them into Lightroom and start the editing process. The first thing you want to do once you're in Lightroom is scroll down until you guys get to the grain adjustment and then add about 25. Next, let's add a bit of luminance to smoothen out that grain while still retaining its texture. Now we can go to the tone curve adjustment and click on the graph in the bottom right so it allows us to set points on the graph. Then make sure you're on the RGB tab which will affect the exposure. I'm gonna set a point near the bottom of the graph and then set another point at the end of the graph and bring this one up in order to help give us that uncontrasted gray look in the shadow regions. I'm gonna set one point towards the middle and bring it up a little bit higher to add a bit more contrast to this photo. Now click RGB and go to the color red so we can now change the shadow color. And we will set a point in the middle and just slightly drag it down. Now go to the color blue and we are gonna make a pointer in the middle and then bring it down just a bit. And we are gonna make one more point towards the middle end and bring it down as well. And this is gonna help us add a little warm look to the shadows. Next, we are gonna uncontrast the photo and bring down the highlights and then bring up the shadows to continue adding this night film look. I'm gonna bring up the whites and then bring up the blacks which will continue to uncontrast the shadows and add towards the film aesthetics. Then I'm gonna sharpen up the image a bit by adding plus 3 clarity. Let's now go to the HSL tool and go to the saturation tab. Here I am gonna saturate the oranges to plus 15. Let's now switch over to the luminance tab which gives us more control on exposing and contrasting certain color portions of the image. Here I'm going to bring up the reds to plus 40, the oranges up to plus 25 and I pushed up the red and oranges to brighten up the subject in order to give them more of that on camera flash look. Now the yellows I will bring up to plus 31. Now for the colors green through magentas I did move around but they didn't really end up affecting my image so you can ignore it in this video. But if you're working on your photo and if your subject has those colors then you guys can slide those pointers over to the right to brighten them up a bit and give them the on camera flash look. This split tony section is going to help us continue adding the colors to the shadow portion of the photo. Hold the option button on your keyboard and then move the slider portion to the right until you guys reach the number 36. This will give us a warm orange tone to our shadows. Then saturate to about plus 5. Once you're finished with this, you can now open this photo up in Photoshop and we're going to continue to add that warm look to the shadow portion of the photo just like Gunnar did in his collage. The first adjustment we're going to make is a curved adjustment and we are going to set a point towards the middle end. And then we're going to set another pointer at the edge and bring that up to add more gray to the shadows. Now in order for us to add warm tones to the shadows, we are going to make a selective color adjustment and make sure you guys are on the black color tab. Now slide the cyan pointer to the left to about negative 3 and the yellow pointer to the right about plus 5. You can now see that we have added yellow to those shadows. Save this and now let's go back to Lightroom. Here's the second photo we'll be using for the collage and here's the Photoshop edit we just made. I'm going to use the first Lightroom edit we made and sync this with the second photo we'll be using. Now let's open both photos in Photoshop so we can now finish the collage. Once you're in Photoshop, let's make a file new. And I'll title it Collage. Next, we're going to change the dimensions to 5 by 6 inches. And I will leave the resolution at 240 pixels. I'm going to start by going to the overview photo and I'm going to click Command A which will select my entire image. Once it's been selected, click Command C to copy. 
Then I'm gonna go back to the new sheet we just made and click Command V to paste the copied image. I'm gonna zoom out now and from here I'm gonna click Command T so I can resize this image. Make sure to hold Shift to keep the original dimensions as we shrink it down. I'm now gonna push this image close to the edge. Next, create a layer mask and select the marquee tool. I'm gonna create a rectangle over the area of the photo we're not gonna be using. Now select the brush tool and make sure you're on the color black. You can now brush over this area to hide it. Once that's done, let's click Command D to get rid of that rectangle. Let's now repeat this process with the second photo. We're gonna start by selecting the image and then copying it and then once again go back to the working tab and paste it. I'm gonna zoom out again and then resize this image but this time make this one bigger than the 5x6 dimension in order to cover the remaining portion of this layout. Next, create a layer mask and lower the opacity to around 60%. We can now see the second photo and know which areas to hide. Now select the marquee tool and create a rectangle where the second photo starts. And to hide this area, make sure you guys brush over it with a black brush. Let's bring the opacity back up to 100 and there you have it, we now have our collage. I did end up getting inspired by this edit and I ended up adding my own little twist. Thank you to everyone who showed love to this post on Instagram. I hope you guys found today's video helpful and if you guys did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. I'll also have this Lightroom preset available for you guys to download for free down below in the description box. Thank you guys so much for the continued support and I'm actually doing my first giveaway today so if you guys stuck around this far, this is how you guys enter. We'll be giving away before the storm sweater in either black or burgundy, your option. And if you guys have noticed, I have been posting this before the storm intro in my past videos. And this is a movement me and my brother have been pushing for to help inspire others to keep creating without any boundaries. To enter, you guys can simply comment anything down below. And I don't get too many comments, so you guys actually have a pretty good chance of winning. I'll be announcing the winner on here next Friday. That's it for today, guys. I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Alright, peace.